What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Broken Tables podcast with our AEW Rampage review. I am your host, Jeffrey Vegas, here with my co-host, as always, King Rome. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing excellent. That's great to hear. Great to hear. We're here with our Rampage review, episode number 113. And man, what a great episode of Rampage this was. Um, You know, even it was one of the recorded episodes and I didn't even catch it like live on television, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I, I had to catch it about an hour ago. This episode was awesome. I had a lot of fun watching this. Yeah, I thought this was a really strong episode. Um, some really cool matches that we haven't seen before uh, were on the show, and they were both the opening and the main event were both really good, um, which, in my opinion, that's really the two matches in Rampage you really need to make sure you kind of nail. You want to start off strong and finish strong. The middle match-wise, you can kind of get away with it being a little lackluster, in my opinion, um, as long as the bookends are strong, and yeah. they definitely were. Definitely agree with that one. Um, I still think that you know one of those middle matches was incredible, but uh, we'll get to that here in a few minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our review here. So pretty much the moment the announcers uh, stopped speaking to introduce us to AEW Rampage after the awesome fireworks uh, to start off the show. Wheeler Yuta is just immediately attacking hangman Adam Page in the ring. Um, catches him from behind, but doesn't really gain the upper hand here. They kind of both uh, just start brawling in the ring. Um, this match was fantastic, man. It was like you know, the storytelling stuff we always talk about, you know, this is long-term storytelling, even though it's a short term with Yuta and Hangman, it's part of a long-term story, you know, of Hangman's going after Mox, and since Mox was KO'd, he wasn't able to be there last week, so Yuta's kind of trying to step up and, you know, take his place for a week or something like that, you know, and this, this, this just kicked ass on every level, man. Yeah, and you talk about the, you know, the built-in storyline, and it's kind of the the example or the reason why Tony Khan does these, you know, you look at AEW and you look at Ring of Honor and it's it's factions, you know what I mean? It's groups. Yep. And and it's a built-in way to make your stories better. You know, having a bunch of guys come together. It's kind of like what WCW did, but they ended up overdoing it and it didn't work. You got to find the sweet spot of it for it to work. And you see it here where it's like, okay, you want to have Hangman continue this mock storyline. Obviously, the other place, they just do rematches. So it's like if this was a WWE storyline, right, you would have Mox and Hangman and they would have wrestled on Friday. They would have wrestled last night and then they would wrestle again on Wednesday. But like tonight, but the Friday match would have ended in like a disqualification. Here, you can continue, you can, number one, have a no BS match, an actual match that has an ending, a strong, solid ending, and you can continue the story without having to do another Hangman versus Mox. Yeah, I agree. It's just, I love how, you know, they just leave these uh, stories, these stories are done so well that you can tie other things into them seamlessly, and it just makes perfect sense, you know, so. (laughs) Uh, Greg, Um, Greg, Greg's here. He says he lost his mind. Thinking he heard Jeff talking in his pocket again. Well, yeah, what up, Greg? What up, Greg? How you doing, man? 
Greg is a uh, former employee of ours from Curly's. Uh, he more than likely made uh, your cheesesteaks and wings when, oh, when I bring that. them over. So He's a real one, man. That's yeah, he is a real one. One of our OGs, man. Hope you're having fun in your new job out there. Oh, Jeff, speaking of Curly's, how, how early can I place an order for Super Bowl Sunday? Oh, man, you might want to place it as quick as you can because we've been sold out for tomorrow for like a day. Like you can't even place an order for tomorrow. Right yeah, now. I'm not going to wait too long, but I mean, I'm thinking I'm thinking sometime this week coming up, I'm going to place an order. Give it a minimum of like five days ahead of time, a week ahead of time. I would at least, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's the plan. I think on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to call it in. Uh, that's too funny. Yeah. So uh, what he's talking about is one day um, he was at work and my voice was playing in his pocket and he was like walking around, like hearing me. And he's like, there's no one here. What is going on? Why do I hear Jeff talking? And he didn't realize that his pocket, my, the podcast turned on somehow. <laughs> That's funny. That was hilarious. All right. So uh, this match, man, had one of my favorite spots that um, didn't oh, really you... seem to get much attention. Oh, go ahead. Is it the double German? No, it was the freaking Death Valley driver off the top rope to Wheeler Yuta. <laughs> oh, my favorite spot of this match was the double German suplex. Where so they're on the apron and Yuta German suplexes Hangman on the apron and then doesn't let go, rolls off the apron, standing outside the ring and does another German. And I was like, that's beautiful. That's cool. yeah. That was that was nasty. But I I don't think I've ever seen the Hangman hit. You know, a, I think it was a Death Valley driver off the. Top rope, man, and you'd have took that like a champ. Mm. Um, yes, I did write down those suplexes as well. The one in the apron was disgusting. Uh, you, it looked like it knocked the wind out of Hangman. He was like, "Oh, you know," like he made a a weird face when he when he hit the apron on that one. Uh, Wheeler hits a really awesome crossbody from the top to the outside, um, but you know, Hangman comes out, hits that buckshot lariat, but instead of the pin. Hangman stands him up, looks into the camera, sets up the the Death Rider, smashes Wheeler Yuta with the Death Rider. Message sent to John Moxley gets the one, two, three. Yeah, and, it's uh, a, you know, it's an inter interesting pivot that we've seen because you know, obviously it was kind of built up on Dynamite a little bit, but last week Hangman's kind of hang he has some remorse here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but. Here, you know, now he's like, no, I'm, I'm going for the overkill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill Mox next week. It, it, it seems like getting knocked out by Mox has completely changed Hangman's uh, personality. You know what I mean? He's got a different outlook on life now. Natasha's here, but she's making a pizza, so she won't be in the chat here. That sounds I'm, delicious. Yeah, thanks I'm, for I'm being here. I'm, I'm gonna grab some Wawa after this. I'm pretty oh, hungry. I'm right. So. I'm, <laughs> All right, so this was great. Um, I love this whole storyline, so um, can't wait for this to continue. I want to see that match with uh, him and Mox, so it should I'm be. I'm still so surprised they're doing the match on Wednesday. Like, hmm. I really think something happens and we get it pushed to the pay-per-view, but the pay-per-view is a ways away, right? It's over a month, isn't it? March 5th. Yeah, we have over a month to go, and I don't know. Like Tony Khan doesn't what usually if... do that. He doesn't change matches once they're announced. Like it's, it's, no, it's... no, no, no. What if we get like a double KO. Like what if they knock each other out in a crazy insane spot? And it's Maybe. like, oh, okay, they both just got counted out. They're both unconscious and they're both not cleared to wrestle until the pay per view. Ooh, I think I just might be on that. something here. What if they knock each other out and the ref counts them out? And so they both want a stipulation match because it's like no stoppage until one of us is the clear winner. Yeah. That's that could be and what would that be a last man standing match like somebody has to stand up to win maybe yeah because i could see that happening where they knock each other out and you get a you get a rare count out draw like i think that would be good wow that's gonna be uh interesting let's see where they go with this next up we had a quick uh after match promo from action andretti and ricky starks from their match on wednesday um they basically said you know jericho you and sammy didn't win this match the bat won this match which i agree with you know what i mean and they went down a list of times where jericho wasn't the one to actually win um you know it was all from him cheating and using the bat or using sammy or using uh, garcia on the outside they had some good points here man um these these two got 
you know, they got it. I'm, I'm a huge Action Andretti fan right now. This guy, every time he's in the ring, it's he has my attention just like uh, Takesha to does, you know? Right. Yeah, I thought the segment was fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks like we're setting up for Ricky and Jericho to go again. Um, I wonder. And Andretti's we'll... fine on the mic, too. That was another thing people were wondering about, you know, so. Yeah, Coach is here. What's up, Coach? What up, Coach? Uh yeah no I yeah I think I think Action Andretti's good on the mic uh he's pretty decent um he's young too so there's room yeah, absolutely he, he's only he can only get better you know all right next up was an Eddie Kingston promo on the House of Black and you know he says the House of Black showed him that the real Eddie Kingston needs to come out now and unfortunately Ortiz was the first one to receive that kill shot. What up, Luke's? Um, Eddie says he understands the House of Black now. He says he feels you. I understand you, and I'm ready to go home. Is he saying he wants to join the House of Black? Like, is he like accept me into the house? I think that's what he's implying, but I wonder. I wonder if this is not going the way that we think it's going to go. Um, yeah, like a little ruse infiltrate. Yeah, I, I do wonder. I wonder if, if Eddie and Ortiz are working the House of Black and it's just like, hey, we had to make it look good. Uh, and Ortiz like, oh, we're from the streets. I'm used to taking some hits from my brothers. You know, yeah. so I so that's why Eddie, like, he's like, yeah, I did what I had to do. I, I could see it going that way. I just, I don't, I wouldn't add to the House of Black. And I wouldn't add Eddie Kingston or, or Ortiz. I don't think either of them really work. I mean, I guess you could argue Eddie Kingston's got, like, the Mad King thing. But it, I don't know, it just doesn't. I don't think his style, his character style fits in on the House of Black. Like, I just don't think it does. No, I agree. But so imagine that it is kind of like a ruse, you know, where he's just trying to infiltrate them. But Malachi kind of is like, and as an initiation, he sprays him with the black mist and it like really causes him to turn, you know? Right. Well, I mean, my follow up question is, do you want to see Eddie Kingston make a drastic character change at this point? No. Right, so I, I I don't know, I I don't think it'll go that way. I think we're getting swerved here. I think you're going to see Good maybe point. Eddie joins for a week or two. Maybe you see something like that happen, but I, I think that the end game here is going to set up. I think Santana's coming back. Like yeah, they're, kind of like when uh, Daniel Bryan joined the uh, Wyatt family for a couple weeks there. Yeah, I mean, well, that was different. That was they caved. They caved because that was just bad booking. They were going to, they were going to, Daniel Bryan was the most over thing in the world of pro wrestling and sports entertainment. And they were just going to be like, you can wrestle Bray Wyatt, someone that they clearly don't care about. So it's like, for them, that was a throwaway. Um, Like, I'm sorry, but like, well, I don't even know if they were going to wrestle Bray. I think originally they said they wanted him to wrestle Sheamus again. Um, But it's just like, no, like they, they, they had to make drastic changes there. And they did like, that was a rare fan, actual fan W moment for, you know, yeah. w, you know, in for sure. 15 years. Like that was one of the few times where they were like, no, oh, fuck. We really, we really, we really got to go with the fans on this one. Yeah. They were trying to cool them off with that and it just didn't work. They try. That's what I'm saying. Like they, they took, they took away his character in an attempt mm-hmm. to make you get over it. Like they had him join the Wyatts and he like, he stopped doing the chance. He stopped showing any charisma. They literally said, bro, just stand there and do nothing. Yep. And, the and the crowd just wasn't having it. They were like, nah, man, we're, we're, that's not how it's going. No. <laughs> but I do All think right. Santana's coming back. I think that this is setting up for a clear trios match. I don't think you have this agree. happen. You, you, like, you just don't have it happen if, if, unless you're going to have a trios match. Um, yeah. I do think House of Black wins the feud overall because I do think they're on a collision course with the elite. I don't know if it's going to be for the titles or not, but I mean, I think it's coming. Yeah, I hope so. All right, next up we had Jay Lethal with Satnam Singh and Jeff Jarrett uh, with Sanjay Dutt, of course, uh, versus the best friends and Danhausen with Orange Cassidy. Um, this was awesome this is what i was talking about with one of the mid card matches i absolutely loved this Mm -hmm. so for a little while now i've been kind of like man chucky t is looking like 
a little raggedy. You know what I mean? His hair was getting all grown out. Like he didn't get a haircut or anything, but I think it's finally reached the length that he was looking for, for this new look he's got. He's got, I don't know if it's a new look. You know what I mean? I haven't been a fan of his for like super, super long, but I thought it was a little bit of a new look for Chucky e. T. You know what I mean? And I think he nailed it, dude. This, this whole, you know, I, I just love the best friends right now. They are absolutely fantastic. Yeah, uh, this was a really fun match. It was hilarious uh, at, at spots. Uh, really enjoyable. It was, uh, like, my point earlier wasn't that I didn't like this match. Uh, I did. Um, I was just making the point in general. But oh, no, it, I, I know. This yeah. was this was a really fun match. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Dan Housen with his ukulele to uh, Jeff Jarrett's guitar. That was hilarious. Um, Satnam Singh, when he grabbed that ukulele, it looked like literally like a little kid's toy in his hands. It was, that was weird. <laughs> it's just so weird to see such a large human being. Like when he steps up onto the side of the ring, it's almost like just taking a double step up, up a set of stairs. It's just mm-hmm. wild. That guy he's so big. Um, but this was great. Um, you know, I've been saying it for a while. I love Jeff Jarrett mixed in with this group of guys. It really rounds out their faction here at, I think it really perfects their faction, to be honest. It just, you know, that, that wily veteran who's willing to cheat, you know, you can't, can't go wrong. (laughs) Yeah, no, totally. Um, I want to point out something that I thought was really funny on commentary that had me dying. Um, So Sanj, so Tony Schiavone at some point, uh, he's screaming at Sanjay Dutt and he's like, I hate Sanjay Dutt. Yeah. (laughs) What a gimmick. Yeah, that was great. I, I, I thought that was just really funny. Uh, in the moment, but yeah, no, this yeah. was a really fun match, and they let Satnam Singh get the pin, which was really awesome. Yeah, you know, um, everybody hit that uh, grab Satnam by the head and snapped his neck down on the ropes thing. Even Orange Cassidy jumped up to do it while the ref wasn't looking. Uh, this caused um, Sanjay Dutt to try to uh, clothesline him, but he eats an orange punch uh, instead. So that was pretty cool to see uh, Sanjay get physical. You know, it doesn't happen too often, but. Sanjay took a nice orange punch on the outside there. Uh, but Jeff Jarrett came in with the uh, Golden Globe and absolutely annihilated Danhausen. And Satnam Singh uh, puts his foot down on Danhausen's chest and Remsburg counts the one, two, three. So, uh, you know, the, the heel faction wins via cheating with the Golden Globe that they stole fair and square, I guess, according to Jericho. <laughs> Jericho says uh, possession is nine tenths of the law, so technically they won that Golden Globe. So you know, yeah. All right. Next up was uh, Ruby Soho with Renee Paquette backstage, and Britt Baker shows up immediately before Ruby can uh, get much out. And essentially, Britt says, "You know, look, you know, I don't like you, and I know you don't like me, but it's time to pick a side." And you know. I really, really liked this for as short as it was. I don't know what it is about it, but it really, really put emotion into this story for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but I just thought this was great. Like, it really makes me wonder, like, what side is she going to choose? I'm like, really like wondering, you know? Well, so I I really thought that this segment was just genius, actually. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about it is, is that number one, it adds another layer of this story, this ongoing story that we're going to get between the homegrown and the, you know, the incoming women. And it's just, we were talking last week about Ru- after Ruby's promo, where it's like, I can't see Ruby Soho turning on the homegrown talent. And she did such a great job with it. And after this segment, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, that's so smart because this is how they get Ruby on to the the other team it, it it would be very simple and lazy for them to just say oh no ruby's with them from the start she, like with the with the wwe girls ruby's going to the wwe girls team from the start and like that's just oh why would ruby do this oh she's a heel now but no like they are adding character motivation because ruby hates Britt baker so strongly that you could see ruby soho looking at herself and saying like look I have my feelings about AEW. I feel a certain way, you know, positively about the homegrown women here. But God damn it, Britt Baker is their leader, and I hate Britt Baker. So I'm on the other team. You know what I mean? It's just, it's kind of like if Britt's the leading this team, this team can't be all that. Like, and, and I think that that's 
a really smart way to tell this story where you can have Ruby with her convictions in a very similar way that Sheeta has her convictions. Like I'm sitting here watching this and I'm like, this isn't, this is 4d chess. Like this is really yeah. well done. Um, it is super smart, super, super smart. hundred percent agree with that one. But how are you, how All are you right. in the YouTube chat with the broken tables podcast and Jeffrey Vegas? What are you doing? What's up? You're in the YouTube chat twice. I mean, what are you switching usernames? On so the, the so the broken tables I uh I have on the computer and Jeffrey Vegas is on the phone, just like Discord. But I think it's actually switched around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is very smart. It's it's super smart storytelling. On it's it's multifaceted, and that's that's my shit. <laughs> I love I love when you can look at it from multiple angles, multiple layers of storytelling. And it's, yeah, it's really good. Yep. All right. Next up was Powerhouse Hobbs uh, with his book um, versus some guy named Tony Mudd. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was this guy's name that bothered me more or H- Hobbs having the actual book with him again. But, you know, you know, where I'm not a fan of the book. Having the book be an actual real thing is just immediately turned me off of this whole storyline um i would rather we go back you know to the memories of walking through town and city and stuff but yeah the storyline's taking kind of a it's not terrible but it's not good it's it's in that really weird mediocre area where it's just like okay well this is a thing i would rather see powerhouse hobbs walk around with a death note to be honest (laughs) yeah just give him that gimmick he's like you're like, okay, here's what you could do. If you want to do this book thing, I think that what would be really cool is instead of going the route of like, it's kind of like a Bible where it's like, these are all the stories that I went through. This is the yeah. book of Hobbes. Cause that's dumb. Um, have it be like, I hurt people. If I put your name in this book, you're getting fucked up. Like that's that, what I'm saying. That's Absolutely. What, that's what the book of Hobbes should be. Um, Cause there's still a chance for them to go that route. Cause they could just be like, I, I add to the book. You were like, you know what I mean? Yeah. If he great Hobbs came down to the ring and he stands at the top of the ramp looking down at who's in the ring, he takes out his book and like writes their name, writes the date. You know what I mean? Yeah. And or you know it'd be really cool if he wrote like how he's going to beat them. He's like, I'm gonna smash his head into the ground. And he wins with like yeah. a pile driver. You know what and I mean? They did they did mention that it says everything that he's going to do to you is in the book as well. So that's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Okay, if it's well, like the death see. note where like if he puts you in there, you're about to get got. Absolutely. That's that's perfect. Yeah. But they better I, do I would, it quick because yeah, yeah. it looks like a Bible right now and it's not. Yeah, not it, it. It, it's it's not working right now. So hopefully yeah. they can bounce back. from that. That's a great way to do it, though. Absolutely. Good idea. Hmm. As soon as you said death note, the light bulb was just like bling. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, but he squashes this Tony Mud dude. Um, he puts him into a torture rack and then hits him with like a face first attitude adjustment or the uh, fu, which I like to call it. Uh, I'm not sure what he calls that because it's not his uh, old, you know, spine buster was his finisher, wasn't it? Uh yes, I believe so. Yeah, so he's using some sort of. He puts the guy in a torture rack and then he does the John Cena, you know, attitude adjustment, but the guy lands on his face. So um. It didn't look uh didn't look all that pleasant, but it looked nasty. So he gets the win there and a nice squash. But yeah, let's do that with the book ASAP. Uh, next up, we had a quick promo from Top Flight. Uh, this is actually pretty good by Darius. Some um, Darius sounds decent on the mic here, and so does Dante now. And they just basically tell the elite, listen, you know, we got a we got a victory over two thirds of your trios team there, so. We called up AR Fox and we're challenging you guys to a trios match for the titles. So, I mean, we all knew that was coming quick, right? I mean, that that was that had to be one of their first couple defenses, and uh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a little bit of a storyline that they could build there because uh, it seems like Top Flight might line up with Matt Seidel as well. Um, New. No. I think there was a thing with on Dark, I recall, where I think Top Flight was there with. Seidel. Maybe I'm not remembering it correctly. But I, I like it. Matt Seidel, but for some reason that just doesn't sound good to me. I don't know why, but um, I'm sure it'll be fine, you know? Yeah. But there might be, I'm just saying there might be a storyline adding up here where maybe we see AR Fox and Matt Seidel in a feud or something. 
Oh, okay. I would like that actually. Okay, that would be a badass match. Yeah, well, because yeah, like... don't get me wrong. Side L's amazing. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I, I don't know. Could be. Oh, that would be good. Like I just didn't want to see him with top flight again so like maybe if those two had a match to see who joins them and make ar fox the winner for sure i'm all in on that right all right next up well besides the 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 main event my favorite segment of the night we had renee paquette backstage with dustin rhodes um Basically says thank you to everybody, um, to the fans and to Tony for all the good wishes over these this past month. I'm I'm unaware. Uh, did something happen in the the Rhodes family? Yeah, his mother passed. Oh man, I did not I did not know that. Yeah, his okay, mother passed so... a few weeks ago. Um, so he was he was dealing with that stuff. Gotcha. Uh, another question I just don't have the knowledge of. Does he have the same mother as Cody does? I don't think it's the same mother because um, it, the picture that Dustin shared on Twitter was not the picture of the mom and Rhodes to the top. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering, like, nobody's been wishing Cody, you know, for his mom passing, right? It's just Dustin's mom, no, I think. Dustin. So I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think Dustin and Cody are full brothers. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's like me and my brother. We have the same mom, different dads, but I assume they have the same dad, different moms. Yeah, I think that might be yeah. what it is. All right, but this was uh, my favorite segment. Um, so after he gets done thanking Tony Khan and the fans for all the uh, well wishes for his mother passing, uh, you know, that is a sad thing, you know. So well wishes to Dustin as well from us here at the Broken Tables podcast. Uh, but Sneaky Swerve shows up. Um, Sneaky Swerve shows up and says, you Rhodes family guys. He's you like, know. you coming in here. I, I'm going to let you take over. I'm just going to let you take over because this is this is your wheelhouse. Go 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 right ahead here. This, this my friend, is this is the shit I live for. This is excellent promo work. That's my it's my favorite part of pro wrestling, honestly, because the, the, the strong promo work leads to strong character and strong character leads to emotional matches. And. This promo was just so good from Swerve. Swerve shows up, and he's like, the nerve of you Rhodes boys. He's like, Dustin, you're always running your slick mouth. Your brother ain't shit, which he's not, by the way. Um, I popped. Like, he got... Oh, dude, I almost I almost oh, fell dude. over out of my chair. I was leaning back. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, he's not shit. He ain't shit. Fuck it. We'll talk about Cody Rhodes, because I actually have some Royal Rumble takes, because the Royal Rumble's tonight. I have some takes. But he says, Cody, you ain't shit, and don't get me started about your father. And I was like, oh, man, so good, so good. Um, this is just, this is top heel shit. This is, this is, I am the top heel in the company level work. Like, he's just so smooth with it, so slick with it. Um, he's, he's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy, man. You know how? How this guy got released from WWE. I'm just like, I don't I don't know what to say. Like it's it's insane to me. But this was yeah, this was so good. Um and when you know where it seems like we're leading to a swerve versus Dustin match, which I think is a great idea. Um I wonder how much more we're gonna see Dustin. I think Dustin's made it pretty clear that when his contract expires, he's retiring um this year. And I think it's up in June. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I, if I recall correctly, I think that, that he's gone on record as saying, like, hey, when, when this current deal is up, I'm done wrestling. Um, okay. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that type of thing happens, but it also changes. Uh, I don't know if Dustin – I don't think Dustin is as old as Sting. I don't remember. Um, but, yeah, this this was awesome. This was really good, really well done. And again, it's smart storytelling because where does it start? Where does it come from? It comes from a real place. Talk about Brian Danielson's promo on Wednesday and how that came from a real place and it and it led to gold. In wrestling, like it's just so important to try to lean on real real shit. It, it's just it, it's just proven. It's just proven to make it better because yeah. you feel it more because these wrestlers they have to they have to believe in them in themselves they have to believe in their gimmick they have to believe in what they're saying and what better way to believe what you're saying than like you're going off of something that you legitimately lived through and oh, man, 
so good. So I, I just like I just couldn't get over when Swerve said, "Your brother, he ain't shit." Like the way oh, he said I, it, just like brushing him off so easily. Like <laughs> I lost it, man. That was oh, uh, that was great. Do we go? Uh, so we should be getting. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You can say your point. I was gonna say, so we should be getting Dustin versus Swerve. Did they announce when that is? They didn't announce a match, so we don't know exactly. Okay. But we I should also get it find done. I also find true joy and true value in the fact that the night before the Royal Rumble, the night where Cody is returning and is is a top three, top four candidate to win the Royal Rumble. Um the the fact that they they bury him. They do bury him. This is them burying him. Um but I don't give a shit. Fuck him. Um, there, there's something special about that. The night before, he could win the Royal Rumble. He's like, he ain't shit. Who cares? Who cares about Cody Rhodes? Exactly. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. He might get booed at the Rumble tonight. I mean, he'll get he'll get cheered when he shows up. But you know. I have, I have a take. We'll talk. I have a take. Yeah, we'll see. I do want to talk about the Royal Rumble. We will talk about. All right, and next up, uh, it was time for the main event. Um, we had Mark Henry introducing uh, Jamie Hayter and Emmy Sakura with their uh, video packages, but it was kind of odd. After Mark Henry uh, started to introduce the main event, we got a backstage promo with Jade Cargill. Um, Jade Cargill had Layla Gray with her, and she was getting interviewed by Renee Paquette, and the baddies or the old baddies showed up red velvet and uh, Kara Hogan and red velvet essentially says she wants to be number 50. <laughs> she thinks she's going to be the one, uh, the 49 and one um, and says, you know, she, she, she wants the match. So I guess it's going to be uh, red velvet for number 50. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I don't think it should be red velvet. People are pointing out that the first person that Jade beat, was red velvet so there is some some poetry there um oh that's right she said i was number one but i'm gonna be that one yeah that makes sense now yeah um i don't want it to be red velvet not to beat her no way i just don't think my problem is right like since red velvets came back from injury she's been an afterthought and i don't think that this story has gotten natalie's here she's she's here for real now and so is the kook um, oh, sorry, to talk Jesus Christ, Natalie. Oh, it's been a long week, I know. <laughs> I've been up since 5 a.m., so you have to excuse me. Um, Natasha's here. And, oh, shit. I don't know. I've been derailed. What were sorry. We no, it's okay. Uh, so we're talking about the Jade Cargill, the Red Velvet. Yeah. Um, you know. I just don't think that the, that the buildup with Red Velvet's been good at all. I think it's been... It's kind of been spotty, and it's like it seems like the whole premise is, is like you guys didn't have my back. Jade's premise is Red Velvet and Kira Hogan didn't really have her back fully with the whole Bow Wow thing. Like that's where this started. Yeah. And it's like that's kind of lame, especially because it didn't go anywhere. Um. So for to to do that, it just doesn't make sense to me. I think there's been not a really very strong buildup and. I would be very underwhelmed if Red Velvet ended up beating uh, Jade. I don't think it would make sense. No, I agree. I don't think it should be Red Velvet. Um, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. So then we did get to the main event of Jamie Hayter versus Emmy Sakura, who made her way to the ring with her royal court of... May Saruga and Aki. This May Saruga chick. I, I don't know who she is. I've never seen her before. I may have seen her before and just not realized it. I just don't recognize the name. And she Wait, was kind of covering her face the Brown? whole time. May has she? Yeah, she's. I, I had a feeling she had. I just didn't recognize the name, you know. She hasn't really wrestled for AW. Uh, I think she did like one match during the pandemic, but she's. Okay. Um... She yeah she she's come out with with Wait. uh with Emmy yeah I feel like now I've seen her have a match with um Serena Deeb but I could be wrong you know no I don't think she wrestled Deeb no but no she's um she hasn't she hasn't always come out with Emmy but she's done tours it's like um remember uh, Lulu Pencil and like Eddie yep, used yep. to love yeah she came out with Lulu a few times she came out after okay. Lulu was gone okay I remember her. I remember that now she's part of Emmy's court. 
You know what I mean? They both are. Yeah. But they looked great. They looked great coming out. Uh, the Coog says Savage main event last night with Emmy and Jamie. Wow, a- absolutely! I was blown away when I got to watch it here today. Um, it was incredible. And Natasha says I think Jade should get to a streak of ninety nine before she loses. My wife says the same thing. Purpleness says Jade should hit a hundred, and I'm just like, no, it's too long. But if you could get it done quickly, like do uh-huh. something on every show, like Dark Elevation, Dynamite, you know, but. No, I that's disagree. too long. It, it took them three years to get to 50 or two. That's what I mean. It's too long. Yeah, no, it, it's way too long. Unless, like you said, even, but the thing is, even if you have her wrestle twice a week, you say, all right, Jade, you're going to wrestle every dynamite. You're going to wrestle every rampage. That's still 25 weeks. And even then, like, there's no shot that Jade is going to legitimately wrestle twice a week. For no, 25 yeah, weeks. No. It's just not happening. Like it's just not realistic. It would be cool if she did a bunch of like 30 second squash matches in a night, like have like four matches, just squash a bunch of people back to back. You know what I mean? But yeah, like nah, at that point, I, it'd, it'd be too I long to get there. That cheapens the streak at that point. I, exactly. Before, yeah, I'm just I'm just throwing ideas out. No, I don't I, even yeah, it, it's I, I too understand. long. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's it's too long. I, I don't think she should go to 99. I think no. that once she passes 50, it's on the table. So the Coog says May is a student of Emmy. She's a regular on Choco Pro, and her and Aki are a tag team there. Oh, man. So I hope this girl comes out all the time with Emmy now. I, I absolutely loved the whole Royal Court thing. This match kicked so much ass, dude. These girls chopped each other's chest into oblivion. Um, if you saw our thumbnail here tonight, freaking Emmy Sakura's chest looks like ground beef. My goodness, man! This was uh, this this match was brutal for the ladies. Uh, you know. All I'll say is, you know, be- best Triple H in the business. Hate hater hits hard. Dude, is it weird that when she made that that before match promo, when she said hater hits hard, that might have been the most attractive thing I've ever seen a female wrestler ever say on television. It, it sounds weird to say that, but like, I was just like, <gasps> like, you know, I like was taken aback by, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, coach, coach knows what I'm talking about, man. Like when a girl, like when a girl says something that you're just like, damn, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so the, this match, I can't say it enough how much this match kicked ass. Um, I think Emi Sakura took a total of four, maybe five, uh, huge lariats, you know, the hater aids. Um, I think it was four, but it could have been five. I might've missed one in there. Um, this was insane. We, you know, we had Jamie Hayter trying to hit the big moonsault. We know that's Emi Sakura's move. Uh, Emmy rolled out of the way and, you know, I didn't want to mention it, but we'll, we'll just touch on it. She barely didn't get out of the way enough and Jamie still kind of landed on her, but it's fine. Wasn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Um, but Emmy comes back and she hits the uh, moonsault and she actually lands it, but only gets the two count. And then Jamie hater proceeds to hit her with, I think it was three in a row of those lariats. And that last one, the, it, it looks like the rainmaker from Kazuchika Okada, where they kind of do the wind up, she calls it the hater aid. Mm. That was that was brutal, man. This this match completely changed my look on uh, Emmy Sakura. Now I did like her before, but I had been saying you know I didn't like her in like you know multiple women's matches like uh, tag teams or trios matches. You can give me Emmy Sakura all day, any 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 way, shape, or form. I'm 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 all in now. She is awesome. Yeah, I think Emmy kind of ends up being one of those gatekeepers to the women, women's division in AEW, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, every division does need that. That's just kind of the unfortunate reality of pro wrestling. Um, but I think that she's somebody that really nails that role, and I would get her on TV more if you could. I, I think she should definitely Absolutely. Uh, be on. This is her first TV match. I, I don't want to say ever, but like, it's got to have been years. Like, I, I don't remember the last time Emmy Sakura was on television. Um, cause she's, I know she's been on dark and stuff like that, but I, yeah, like yeah, to no. be on like actual rampage or dynamite. You're right. I'm not sure how long it's been. 
Yeah, she's a mainstay on Elevation. Um, but like, yeah, I, I I would love to know when the last time she was on TV because I I can't tell you. No, I it can't has either. to be the pandemic era at the very earliest. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Uh, but no, this was a yeah, it was an excellent main event. Um, brutal, like their their chests were just bruised. Um, I I think that may be the first time that I remember seeing a women's match where they were just like purple chests. Like I was like, holy shit, man, oh, great. Yeah, that was brutal, man. Um. I was not expecting Emmy's chest to look like that. Like when they uh, cut over to her and I was just like, I think Jericho brought it to my attention. Jericho was like, Emmy's chest looking all bruised up there. And I looked over like, what? You know, it's, it's, I don't know if I've ever seen any of the uh, women come out of a match looking like that with, you know, besides the whole bloody, you know, matches. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's it for AEW Rampage review. Um, I thought this was an excellent episode even though it was recorded and I watched it on DVR afterwards. Um, this was a freaking fantastic episode of rampage. Um, I couldn't imagine if they had actually done this one live, this could have even been better, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great show. I really enjoyed it. All right. So, uh, what do we have coming for this week's dynamite? Do we have any sort of a card put together yet? Do, uh, I'm actually pulling it up right now. Yeah, no worries. Coog, hit exclamation point except in the chat. Accept my challenge, sir. It's a new thing I got going on in the chat. You can challenge someone to a match. All right, well, so here we Wait, go. Wait, it says you must bet it. Oh, I didn't bet anything. Oh, hold on, hold on. You're All right, money. you can go ahead, though. Uh, we have Hangman Adam Page versus John Moxley this Wednesday on Dynamite. Kanosuke Takeshita will be taking on Brian Cage. Uh, the Acclaimed will be in action. We will be getting the TBS Championship match, Jade Cargill versus Red Velvet. Brian Danielson will be taking on Timothy Thatcher. And we, what I assume will be the main event, we will have a, a, yeah, a no-holds-barred match for the TNT Championship, Darby Allen versus Samoa Joe. Nice. Yes, very, very strong card. So let's let let's talk about the Royal Rumble because I have some thoughts, right? I'm not watching the Royal Rumble, which is kind of crazy for me because I even watched the Royal Rumble last year. Now the Royal Rumble last year was absolutely terrible. Remember, I think you weren't even you you were watching it too, and we were texting. I think, and I was like, "This is like yeah. the worst Royal Rumble I've ever seen." Like. There were no surprises that it like bad. who won? I think Brock won, didn't he? Or like I don't even remember. But it was like it was not good. It wasn't was a good it memorable, match. obviously. I have no clue who even won. I don't even remember who won. And it was just it was terrible. And so like I think the Royal Rumble is honestly one of the greatest concepts in pro wrestling. Uh, it's such a great idea. And it's it, it's so well done in a way where you can have legends come back, you can have some surprises, you can have some fun stuff. There's so many people in it, and it's so spread out that you can tell multiple stories. Again, I love when you can tell multiple stories. And it's great, except for the fact that it hasn't been. I have zero interest in it tonight. and But I, but I wanted to give some thoughts, because though I have zero interest, I have thoughts about it. Right? So I, I'm... I'm I'm going to be realistic, because again, the, the whole thing is is that I'm not a troll. We've made it very clear. I legitimately hate WWE for reasons, and I don't want to get into, into them. If we have to explain them... What? You know what I mean? I, I don't know what to tell you. There shouldn't yeah. be any explaining on why we don't like them. Right, yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm really not one of those guys who just hates them. I didn't wake up one morning and say, you know what? Fuck the Fed. No, I didn't do that. It, it was, it was a buildup over years and years much like coog much like you much like you know most of the, most of our audience my thoughts are that Sami Zayn is the most over act in that company and has been for a long time yep it, it, am i wrong on that you think is that generally agreeable? no i mean for a minimum of a year you're absolutely correct and, a year. So and most over act <sighs> over the past year yeah um you have to like. Sammy should win the Royal. 
and he should go on to beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I think that that is the most correct thing to do. I really do. However, I feel like there's three options that are going to happen before that happens. And all of them are terrible. You know, one option I see it being Cody, which you're you're just he's he's over because he went he was in AEW. And like I understand like people say like oh WWE guys are over when they go to AEW. It's different. And I'm not saying that Cody can't go work wherever. But like when Cody came in, they strapped the rocket to his back because he was an AEW guy. Like that was the point. Like that's the whole point of his gimmick. Same name, same music, same gear, same Cody. And and that's why he you know they were so behind him. I think Cody coming back and winning and then beating Reigns, I, I don't think it's warranted or justified at all. Uh, I don't care about the injury angle, personally. Uh, I think you got to go with, like, who's over. Like, it's it's the same problem that this company's had forever. Stop bringing in guys. Make your make your guys mean something. Like, if Sammy's yeah. been there for years in the trenches doing good, great work, not even good work, fantastic work, Um, you got to give it to him. You know, and then I also think, like, well, Brock Lesnar's in the Royal Rumble. Are they just going to let Brock win? And then, obviously, you got to talk about Dwayne. So, Dwayne. so here's my th- – real quick, I'm going to interject there. So here's my thoughts on Brock being there. So they kept mentioning that Stone Cold has a bunch of records that Brock could beat, right? Mm-hmm. So Brock's going to be in there. I think Stone Cold's going to be a surprise, and he's going to throw out Brock Lesnar leading to a match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, I've I've heard about that too. Uh, I've read that they really want to do a Stone Cold versus Brock match. My following follow up point though is: Does anybody really in 2023 want to see Steve Austin wrestle Brock? Like, what is that match going to look like? I just don't. I don't see that match being very good. And, and like, I'm sorry, but like, that would be like if they booked Sting in a singles match versus like Bobby know. Lashley. <laughs> No, I'm I'm trying to make an AEW comparable reference. Like, oh, okay, Powerhouse Hobbs. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like if they booked Sting versus Powerhouse Hobbs in a straight up singles match. Yeah. Like, Hobbs is gonna have to take it easy on him, and Sting is not like Sting's great, but like the way they book Sting is the way you should book your legends. Tag matches, like Sting has has not wrestled one single singles match, and he probably won't unless, except for maybe his last match, which should be against Darby Allen. And he gets his one amazing spot in every match that blows your mind, you know. Exactly. Other than that, he's a solid worker. People are just excited to see Sting and participating. And it's not that Sting does badly. It's just that he's not the center point, nor should he be in his 60s. So my thing is, like, with Stone Cold, you bring him back, you have him do a match with Brock Lesnar? Like... It's like, are we going to watch Brock murder an old man? That's pretty much what it's going to look like. Or you're going to see Brock ease up on Stone Cold, and it's not going to look good. It's like, Brock's style is not not the kind of style you want to throw an older guy in there with. You got to take 10 suplexes minimum in a Brock Lesnar match, you know? Right. Uh, Coog said he'll he'll see us in Discord. All right, thanks, Coog. Right Uh, on, Coog. Thanks for joining. Natasha agrees. She says Stone Cold's too old. Uh, He can't injure him. He can't move like he used to, and Brock would legit injure him. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. but so like, yeah, so Brock's in the rumble, they could have Brock win. And then honestly, I, I do think that they're going to have Dwayne in the rumble. I, I, I think he's yeah. coming back. You um, can't be like the rocks, not in ring shape. I'm like, look at him. What, what more shape could he be in? He is chiseled from granite. Like, yeah, I don't buy it. I, I think <laughs> that that's just them trying to, trying to work people. Um, uh, I get it if you're saying like his stamina, but it doesn't take that much to be in a rumble coming in at 30 or something, you know? Yeah. And then my, but my follow up point to that, right. Is like, once again, like my, my, the point that I really want to talk about the rumble is I think that no matter who you choose to win the rumble, if it's not Sami Zayn, it is a critical failure of the, of the hunter of the triple Paul booking like i don't give it i don't care if vince is back or whatever he's back at titan towers we already knew that was going to happen this is a complete indictment on triple h's booking you know like that you can't defend like it needs it should be sammy and if it's not sammy you fucked up like like your biggest show of the year you know your main event your world title of your biggest show of the year it, it should be your two hottest acts in the main event 
Yeah. And if you're not doing that, then you messed up. It's like, what, are you going to have Sammy and Kevin Owens beat the Usos at WrestleMania? Like, that's lame. Like, I understand that, like, Sammy and Kevin have their history, but it, it just goes to prove the point that there is so much talent in that company that will just forever languish in the mid card, that will just forever do nothing of, of, of consequence. It's yeah. just like, you'll, like, I don't know. It's just disappointing. So, like, uh, I. Yeah, I got you. Like, and Natasha, I, 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 I do understand the whole ring shape and movie shape thing, but like for a rumble, if he's going to come in late, that's not a big deal. Like for a singles match. Yeah. He's got to get into ring shape, but he can, he can hop in to the end of a rumble. I don't know. It, it's, it's going to be pretty terrible. It's going to be, I mean, yeah. I'm going to follow it on Twitter just so I know. Cause I, again, I like to be in the know and make sure I know what I'm talking about when I talk about things, but no, I'm not, you know, We'll know whether uh, Vince is in charge after this one because they rarely have two bad ones in a row. And if this is another bad one, it's almost guaranteed he's in charge. You know what I mean? I completely disagree with that, Jeff. I think that whether this Rumble, the Rumble being bad is not an indication of either or. Um, I mean, I've been saying it since, you know, for, for months at this point. Triple H, where did Triple H learn how to book? Where did he learn how to run run that part of the business he yeah. learned it from vince like hello like it's not it, he's not much different than vince like it, it's really not that much of a change so i don't know i just want to talk about it a little I know bit what you mean. i think the rumble is going to really be a tell-all like like i'll say this if Sami Zayn wins the royal rumble tonight goes to wrestlemania and beats roman reigns i will give them props because oh, me too. Absolutely. Yeah. That is the right thing to do. There is a right thing to do for WWE. Like again, I, I can't make it clear enough that I don't just hate them for no reason. Like there is a correct pathway to this. And the correct pathway is for Sami Zayn, who has been part of this Uso storyline, part of this bloodline storyline, for him to get to that point and then beat Roman. Like that You know what this reminds me of? Point. It doesn't remind you me mentioned of him earlier movie. tonight. This reminds me of the Daniel Bryan situation. Feels like, you know, the, the, the hairy bearded guys loved by the fans and they weren't exactly wanting that. And now they're trying to get out of it, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I just think. I just think it's. I don't have any faith in them doing the right thing. Uh, and like, and let me. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I could see Sammy winning the Rumble and then losing to Roman at WrestleMania, and it's just like, mm. I could see that. Yeah, I could see Sammy winning the Rumble and then them being like, "Your final test is to go lay down for Roman." You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, that would be terrible. Um, even if he doesn't, it would. It's just like that's not a good storyline at, at at your main event of WrestleMania. That's not a good storyline. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see, but uh, I'm not expecting really a, a super great show. I mean, enjoy Zack Ryder and, and Chelsea Green. No, so, Z I mean, he said on Twitter a while ago, he said, Zack Ryder is dead. If I ever go back, it will not be a Zack Ryder. So either he I was would, lying and money I, talks I or... Matt Cardona, E2, like, okay, whatever. It's Matt Cardona, Zack Ryder. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, just... I, they I would be care. stupid to not bring him in as Matt Cardona because everybody knows him right now as Matt Cardona. You know what I mean? And that's why they want him back. So it would be dumb to go back to Zack Ryder. I, I find it really amusing. And again, it's about the money. But I just find it really amusing for Matt Cardona to be like, hell yeah, I'll go back to the guy who thought I was dog shit. Triple H fucking hated Zack Ryder. He hated him. Like, yeah. Matt Cardona, when he started doing the... um the Z Trong Chu Long Island like podcast where he was kind of recapping the episodes of, of the YouTube channel that he had. And he's like, yeah, man, uh, every week he was like in the first few, you know, he was like triple H man. He just, I'm not shitting on him, but he really hated me. Like I was like, I was trying to be, you know, good, you know, good team player. And I would tell him my stuff. And like he triple H like did like a video, I guess, where he like interviewed on like a red carpet. And he was like, Zach, I, who cares about Zach Ryder? Like, yeah. Come on, man. Like, I don't know. You got to have some principle at some point where you're like, man, this guy really didn't think shit about me. <laughs> like, right, I'm, right. You know, go back. Like, all right. I mean, I guess the money is worth it, but I don't know. What can you yeah. do? Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, it's going to probably be Cody or Dwayne. 
probably. Yeah. I hope it's Sammy. I really do. It should be Sammy. There's no reason. He minimum, it deserves to win the Rumble. Minimum. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, not min- minimum. He deserves to win the Rumble and then win the title at Mania. Like, <laughs> he's your hottest act. And I'm not saying it has to be a long title reign, but like, True. like the point is, is like you built again. It's all about building guys up. You had Roman be a champion. Roman has the focal point of your company for years at this point. Like, years. He's the focal point of your entire company. He's the only guy that you made sure got over. Right? And so, yeah. like, you need to make someone in that process. Like, Cody is not the guy to beat Roman. Like, he's not. Like, I understand that Cody so, is super over with people, but, he like, he's not, he's not, you're not going to make Cody. Like, Cody does not elevate from winning a world title. Like, I'm sorry. At this point of his career, like, he just, he doesn't, in my opinion. Um, so, I've way, been hearing... Way, you know? Go ahead. I've been hearing rumbles of... That's where... Of Roman competing on both nights of WrestleMania. Terrible. Insinuating that he would be defending each title individually again, right? Yeah. What if we get a two men hit the floor at the same time at the end type thing with Sammy and Cody or something. Uh, I, I still think Dwayne's coming back and Natasha. I agree with Natasha completely. She says, if Dwayne wins, the, if Dwayne's in the rumble, he's winning it. It's a guarantee. They wouldn't bring him back to lose. I completely agree. Um, no. Yeah. He wouldn't know, agree man. to come back. He'd be like, you want me to do what? <laughs> yeah. I just... And, uh, All right, and well... again, it also goes into my problem where it's like, Oh, wow, you're bringing... <laughs> what are we talking about? We're talking about The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin in 2023 being meaningful entrants in Royal Rumble. It's like... like Seriously. Okay, I get it. I really get the nostalgia. I totally understand it. And it would be a cool moment. Like, I could see them doing a moment where, like, Steve Austin's in the ring and, like, The Rock returns and you have that stare down and you let them, like, go at it a little bit. I totally understand that. And there's a lot of appeal to that moment. But you need to, you like, Ooh, you can't have point, these Natasha. guys. You can't have these guys in a winning predicament where they're winning the rumble. Like you just can't no. do that at one point. Um. All right. Well, we shall see how it goes tonight. Well, I guess we won't. You know, we'll we'll find out later. I'm not I'm not watching it. I don't know about you. <laughs> but um. Ooh, ooh, hold on. I want to read this real quick because Natasha just, that is an excellent. Yeah, I just said great point, Natasha. (laughs) Cody is over because of the situation, not because he got himself over. Sammy got himself over despite WWE's booking. That, that is the comment of the night. That is exactly. Quote of the day. Yeah, that's the quote (laughs) of the day. That is a factual statement right there. And it's kind of what I said earlier. Cody got over because like, oh my God. The AEW guy came to WWE for once. The tables have turned. Oh my god! And he's got the same gimmick and the same music. He's the same guy. And it's just like you're just over because the Fed fans finally got one. Like the Fed fans got one. You know what I mean? It's like it's like Cowboys fans celebrating a, their first playoff win in freaking forever. You know what I mean? It's just like cool. I guess you still lost the next week and you're out. Like. You got one. I'm like, all right, that's great. Congratulations. So, a Cowboys fan, a Giants fan, and a uh, Washington fan walk into a bar. Get them with it. Do it. To so watch the Eagles play in the National League Championship. Ah. <laughs> um, Tasha says, I don't have the money for Peacock, so I can't watch it. I have Comcast and I have Peacock for free. I could literally yeah. watch the Royal Rumble. I could literally go into my 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 room over there with my TV and turn it on for free, include yeah. it with my cable, and watch the Royal Rumble. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I have Comcast as well. I have it for free, but I don't. I'm, I'm not. Oh man, but uh, I do want to show you something before uh, we go off tonight. You got the uh, pod up. Uh, uh yes. Check out yeah. this card I picked up on E. Mm-hmm. This is like a super rare sparkle refractor PSA 10. So that's like a perfect score. If this kid, when they finally bring him up out of the minor leagues, does good, this thing will be worth so much. Nice. He's got that nice Phillies uniform on in this picture, so it's pretty sweet. It's his first card he's ever gotten, too. That's why it'll be worth so much. It's Mm -hmm. called a first. 
it's his first card ever. Nice. All right, man. You got anything you wanted to uh, add before we head out? No, that, that that's pretty much it. All right. Well, what's up, Jordan? Welcome here at the end. I uh, wish there was wrestling on today. I know, man. I know. I know the wife doesn't, though. <laughs> Oh, a Pittsburgh gal. Just happy to see a PA team win the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, man. We'll go ahead and uh, close us out if you don't mind. All right. Well, this has been episode 113 of the Broken Tables podcast. If you like the video, please leave a like and a subscribe. Uh, thank you to everyone hanging out with us in the chat today. Uh, Natasha, the Coog, who's not with us at this point. Uh, Coach, Jordan joining in at the end. Luke's Comics was here earlier, along with a few others. Thank you guys so much. Please hit the like button on your way out. Uh, thank you to everyone who's listening or watching this video uh, in the future, uh, whether it be tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday or whenever. I uh, really appreciate that. You can follow us down below in the description uh, at our social medias, Twitter specifically. Uh, we go live usually every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. Monday is our game room podcast, our video game-based show. Uh, Wednesday is our Dynamite review, and Friday is our Rampage review. Um, our schedule's a little shaky at the moment, but we're working it out. Just bear with us. Um, but until next time, we'll see you guys later. Right on. And as Rome said, you guys have yourself a great night. And until next time, top guys, out. Out.